If the Rodecaster Pro 2 is the ultimate versatility in podcast production, the Focusrite Vocaster is absolutely the opposite. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I only got the interface, not the full studio pack. Wonder why. Now it is all plastic, but it actually feels rather premium. It's really nice plastic, I guess. The buttons and knobs do feel great. And aesthetically, it's a pretty sharp looking unit. Size wise, it isn't as big as I thought it would be. Feel free to pause for your reaction. And it's a bit bigger than my outstretched hand. Once again, pause for reaction. As for the IO on the thing, eh, pretty robust considering. Two quarter inch headphone outs on the front and on the back, you have two XLR mic ins. Two monitor outs, jack for a cell phone, and another one for camera audio, which is kind of a nice touch. Of course, you have your phantom button as well as the Bluetooth pairing button and the USB port. I should also point out that the presentation when this thing is plugged in is absolutely gorgeous. I love the LED lighting for the indicators and the DBFS meter. This thing, it's kind of sleek. Now it is listed as a two in and two out. It's 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. It's USB 3.0 with a type C connection, which is super cool to see. There is 70 dBs of gain on this unit, but weirdly no EIN listed to tell us how noisy these preamps are. Foreshadowing perhaps? And I should point out that this thing is USB bus powered. So you're gonna want some low impedance headphones to use with this. Just so you know, this thing does come with a software hub as well as a few other treats. You do get a copy of Hindenburg. It's a nice touch and it will get you recording and editing much quicker if you don't already have a DAW. The setup is relatively straightforward if you read the directions. It isn't a plug and play unit. You need to install stuff first. It does take a few minutes and you're basically done. However, there's one massive annoyance here. Installing the hub requires you to restart. So. Just so you know, you download the hub, you install it, you restart. Only to be faced with an update to the software, which means you have to download it again, install it again, and restart it again. Doesn't seem like much, but a quick word for Focusrite. The bar has been raised for customer service and support at this price point. And it's the little things that can really sink the ship. For the love of God, your downloadables should be the latest versions. Stupid stuff like this puts a sour taste in my mouth and makes me feel like the customer isn't your first thought, and that is not good. Now, I think the biggest competitor for this is the Podtrack P4, so let's kind of put those side by side and look at it. There is a lot of awesome functionality here, and if you factor in the price of the DAW, they're relatively similarly priced. I do think that the P4 wins with expandability, and if there's ever a chance that you might need more than two microphones, the P4, uh, it's the choice to make at this price point. But outside of the popularity of the P4, it does kind of fall short to the Vocaster. Now it's a much nicer build. It seems to target a specific part of the market that isn't looking for the biggest and baddest tech. And the target is simple at home podcasters that need simple solutions. Fully multi-track when recording is really what separates it from the P4, which only offers two outs when used with a computer. So if you are in the market and it does come down to this or the P4, well, the Vocaster 2 seems to be the pretty easy choice. Now we have the SM7B plugged directly into the Vocaster 2. Our gain is sitting at about 75%. And a couple things to note here. One is that I'm showing them about to peak again in the Vocaster 2. And this has been a bit of an ongoing issue because on my uh, DAW, I'm showing neg 15 to neg 12 peaks, which is nowhere near peaking. I'm kind of thrown off by that. However, we do have a decent signal, so let's work with that. At 75%, neg 15, neg 12, probably not the best for streamers. So let's amp it up and see how it sounds when you put a little bit more gain into it. All right, now we're at 100% gain, and there's a couple things I want to point out. The first thing is that it says I'm clipping, and I'm actually limited at neg three. Something I wanted to show you, which I find very interesting, I used a little bit of screen grab for this. I've got this pinned out at 100%, okay, which you can tell is actually rather loud, but also clipping. The problem is not clipping in my DAW. I'm showing a max of neg three, which means there's some sort of a limiter involved. Now let's do a preamp test. And for this, we're just gonna jack it up to 100 and listen with their ears. Now we're on the Vocaster hub and we're gonna see some of what you can do with this. You can actually have full functionality 
of all the buttons inside this hub. So if you want to actually change things out, you don't want to be physically pressing buttons and you want to do it in a virtual setting, you can actually do that. And it's kind of cool that you can turn on phantom. You can change your mic level here by going all the way up to a hundred. You can mute. You can also individually address each channel. And these channels do record in multi-track. You've got guest aux, which is your camera audio, your Bluetooth, your loopback one, loopback two, and your show mix in the end as well. You can also auto gain it, which is a pretty simple process where you click auto gain and it registers the volume of your voice. And then it basically sets the gain pretty low. So when I did it for my voice, it set the gain. So I was getting peaks at about neg 18 to neg 15. On the other hand, you also have enhancements. And right now, enhancements are off. So we're going to turn them on and we're going to see how they sound. This is with the enhancements off. And this is with the enhancements on. This is the clean enhancement. We can move over to warm. Now, I've actually already gone over a lot of these and I do find warm is a little muddy for me with the SM7B. So we're going to move over to bright and you'll notice the airiness kind of gets a bit of a boost there. And finally, let's move over to the radio setting. This is your uh, NPR, I guess, setting. And we're gonna click on that. And you're gonna notice a lot more of the low and a lot of the chestiness comes back, but you also get a little bit of that airiness as well. So there you go, that's the Vocaster hub. All right, while well, we've got the SM7B plugged in, let's do a high impedance headphone test. These are the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro 250 ohms. Let's put these on. I do want to point out they're quiet. <laughs> I have them at about 50% and I'm going to gain up on the headphone amp just to see how much comes through. Okay, so you can actually get it to a decent listening level, which is actually kind of impressive on a bus powered interface. However, I do have to say you can hear some of the noise from the amplifier, the headphone amplifier inside. Just a little hiss. So if you want to avoid that little hiss, I would suggest getting something, I like the Rode NTH100 or whatever, something that's a lower uh, impedance, something around 50 would probably do just fine. Otherwise though, if you are rocking the 250s, the DT770 Pros, it'll work. You're not gonna be as loud as you wanna be though. One of the big problems I actually have with this is that kind of the limiter that's included, that's kind of hardwired into this. And I do notice just a touch of compression as well that is kind of hardwired into the Vocaster too. I would love to be able to not use that. I would love to be able to switch it off. However, I could see that being uh, almost a selling feature for some. So I guess that's up to you whether or not you like that feature. However, with the hub, I would love just to this little button to be able to turn that off. That would be a great feature. All right, there are a few things in the final thoughts here. It is a decent little piece of gear. It looks awesome, does everything out of the box that it promises. I do notice that the DBFS meter kind of lies to me a bit, telling me I'm about to peak, even though my peaks are sitting at neg 15. That is really weird and annoying. Aside from that, I think the only other bone to pick is the ease of install. Yes, I'm a little sore about all the reboots. That said, it is an elegant solution for some, though I think in this day and age, the lack of XLR inputs might put this thing at a bit of a disadvantage. That said, if you know that you won't need more than two, well, it's a fairly easy recommendation. And if this is your first foray into podcast interfaces and you want to see the absolute king of podcast interfaces, try this video out. It's an absolute beast.